Hello, lads and lasses. My name is Professor Starden Budden Harden Bot. And uh, you might be wondering what the computer science professors do with a bit of stuff in math. I'm like, ah, I had a lad come over to me the other day asking, hey, I need some help with some use substitution. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, the one that, you know, the use substitution that you go and you use whenever you're taking an integral, the antiderivative of an integral, you just put that. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's the one, mate. Thanks, can I uh, help you out a bit? I'm like, all right, cool. And I'm like, let, take, let me see a look at your notes, see where you're going wrong. And uh, he comes up to me, right? He comes up to me. And he's like, hey, take a look at this. And he shows me. He shows me two bloody problems on one page. And I'm like, what are you doing, lad? Oh, you man. You need to make sure Mr. Simpson doesn't get a hold of that. Otherwise, he's going to boot you right to the curb. You need to make sure you got one problem per page. It makes sure, like, you know, at least you know it's right. But if you're doing, like, if you're doing a professor or anything, it makes sure it needs to be one problem for one page. Otherwise, you're going to have a right amount of time. Anyway, so... I ended up helping him out, right? And he's like, ah, oh, thanks, Professor Stark. Work hard and lot. I'm like, ah, no problem, lad. And he yeah, goes off, and yeah, I'm like, hey, go ahead and give me the bit of that homework. I want to take a look at that, see if I can help anyone else out. And just case it comes, he's like, all right, cool, here you go. So, I decided to choose a problem for my homework, and this one, oh boy, this one, this one's a nice one right here. So, I, in my infinite wisdom, have decided to do number 12. Now, number 12 is a special one, right? Because as you can see, it doesn't have your standard integral song. Usually it looks something along the lines of that, but this one has some numbers around you may be thinking, why? Why does it have numbers around it? Numbers around an integral time, what does that mean? Well, pretty much it means you're taking the antiderivative of it. However, what you're doing is you're also looking at the, for the area underneath the curve. So instead of your answer being an equation, it's going to be a number or some weird form of the subtraction of the two numbers. And you may be thinking, oh yeah, that's pretty rock and down, but how do I go about starting to doing it? Well, it's like, hmm. Since we're using u substitution, you got to find yourself a nice u. Pretty much what we like to do is we like to find an exponent. And the reason why we like to do an exponent is, you know, take them out on date first, make sure they're all nice. Sometimes you can't find an exponent, but usually you want the exponents. Exponents are the good ones. <laughs> like, so the first one I decided that sine of theta would be the good exponent in this case. Because you see we have sine squared of theta. I'm like, hey, that's pretty good. May as well kind of add it together, see how that goes. So what you got to do in respect now you're kind of breaking down the problem. What you're going to do is you now got to get the problem is in respect to the u since you're using u substitution. And it's like, well, how do I do that? Well, in order to make sure, you got to that, you got to take the derivative of the u, but you also got to be sure, got to be real mucking sure, that you're able to uh, pull the du out of it. Otherwise, you don't have the right u. You can make changes to the du, like have it divided by two or times one half or times like three. But you got to make sure that du itself, any changes you make to the du, has to be reflected in here, in this equation. So, what I decided to do is I'm like, well, this one's pretty simple. As you can see, the derivative of sine is just cosine. It's like, oh, that's right. That's all right, nice. Right? We're going to add du at the end of it. Oh, it's actually cosine of theta. But pretty much, you see those when you substitute them out for du, it's just simple replacement, pretty much. So, now you're moving on, and you're like, hold up, wait a minute. I noticed these numbers are out here. What's up with that? I thought it was pi, it was, I thought it was zero to pi over two to me like, oh, well, let me tell you. So what you gotta do next is now that everything's in well, you know, in kind of respect to you, you also gotta make the integrand in respect to you. Otherwise you're gonna have some weird numbers whenever you finally plug that in. It allows you to skip a couple of steps, like rewriting the entire thing in terms of sine of x, right? So instead of writing like, oh this and that and this and that and this. You just be like, oh, well, we know that u at this point pretty much equals 3, and u at this point pretty much equals 1. So what I did is I took 0, and I plugged it into the u right here. So as you can see, when z when theta equals pi over 2, it equals 1. I'm like, hey, that's pretty good. And when z theta equals 0, u equals 0. And I'm like, wow, that's like the best number ever. That's pretty easy, Mr. So, professor starting with hard and about. Yeah, I know. It's really nice. But anyway, carrying on, I kind of merged some steps here, right? So I decided to, you see, we have the, pretty much whatever you sub it in for u, we got a nice thing here, you got u squared, and it's from 0 to 1, du, it's like, oh, that's nice, that's really nice right there, man. Anyway, so what we're going to do next, we're going to integrate, and integrate sounds hard, sounds like some black magic stuff, but it's not, I'll tell you that. So, black magic, we're doing a bit of black magic here, pretty much what we're doing is we are trying to figure out what it, what that is to be. What the antiderivative of that u is. 
And you can see we had a squared up there, you know, do squared sum part course of the exponents three. But what's the number out front? Well, here's the thing. If the exponent used to be three, that means the number out front had the, the number out front's currently one. That means we had it, something had to get rid of that three, otherwise we'd see a three u squared. That's not right. That's not right at all. So pretty much what you have to do is you have to find the reciprocal of the exponent. So pretty much it's gonna be Instead of it's not two over one, no, that'd be some weird fraction. It's going to be one over three u to the third power, and that's going to be our antiderivative. But you can't forget that you're integrating it from zero to one. So instead of doing that nice little squiggly thing, you got to do a line from you know, got to put zero to one there. As you can see, I decided to put that right there. That's some nice stuff right there, though. Because now it's like, oh well, that's the answer. Just box the square, throw it away. Oh, hold on, just another second. Like, what do you mean, Professor Starting Buddha talking about? I don't understand what's going on. I thought this was the answer. Remember what I said? We're looking for the area underneath the curve because this is a definite integral. That sounds weird, man. You have to have a number, not, not an equation. Anyway, carrying on, pretty much what you do is you do this theorem that pretty much states you take the big number, you plug it into the, you plug it into the equation, and you subtract the same, you subtract the lower end of the spectrum, plugged into the equation as well. That's pretty much a layman's terms for it. There's a lot more complicated stuff, but pretty much what it says here is, all right, cool. So we got one to the third power times one, thir one third. Order of operations kind of kind of matters here because one to the third power is going to be one. And then one times one third is another one. So that's pretty much easy. That's pretty simple. But what about this nice zero over here? Well, Thankfully, we're subtracting pretty much effectively zero because it's zero to the third power is zero. And then one, zero times one third is also zero, so it's pretty much easy. And in the end, the answer you're looking for is going to be one third. And you may be thinking, oh, my, that's all nice, though. And is that all? Yeah, that's all, buddy. And if you want to make sure that you got your answer right, you want to make sure that you got everything nice and clean, what you do is whenever you get your integral, you put it back and you, you substitute the u back in there. So it's going to be one third sine you know, squared and everything. And it's like, all right, cool, then you take the derivative of that in order to make sure you got it right. If you don't get it right, it means you did something wrong. And you gotta go back and find either a different u or find a different integration strategy. Anyway, that's all for now. This is Professor Starting Wooden Hard and Bot signing off. Hope you all have a good, good time and take care out there.